Welcome back to the Super Data Science Podcast. This is 5-Minute Friday, and today we're talking about storytelling in data science. So just recently, I was watching a compilation of talks by Anne-Marie Hutelling. So Anne-Marie is an author and a public speaker. And what I found interesting in this compilation was one talk where she was talking specifically about storytelling. This was not necessarily related to data science, just about conversations and how we talk and engage with people and how we get others to understand our message and remember it. And so what I found interesting was that she said there's two types, two ways of going about explain, explaining something and conveying information. One way is just the hard facts, just conveying facts, data, information uh, for a person to grasp and understand and comprehend. And in that case, when you're just conveying facts to somebody, what actually happens is there's only two parts of the brain that are activated at that point in time. One part is called the Broca's area, and the second part is called the Wernicke's area. So Broca's area is the part of the brain um, which is responsible for la- language production, where we actually can create words and actually say things. Whereas Wernicke's area is the part of a brain that is responsible for language comprehension, when we take in uh, words and process them into information, into things that, like data that is gonna be stored in our brain, so we're actually understanding what's being said. So only two parts of the brain are active when you're telling somebody facts, when you're exchanging facts with somebody. On the other hand, if you tell somebody a story, if you make them excited, if you make them engage with the story, if you make them imagine things, if you make them um, try to understand not just like the facts, but understand how things feel, how things look, how things might smell and so on, a huge number of parts of the brains are all of a sudden activated. Um, For instance, I've got them right here. Um, She states that the amygdala, is uh, activated, the part of the brain responsible for visual images, part of the brain responsible for memories of our experiences, part of the motor cortex, emotions, smells, and other parts of the brains are all all of a sudden activated. And uh, a great example of that is if you tell somebody um, 10 random facts, and uh, or let's say you name uh, for somebody 10 of the tallest buildings in the world, and you tell them how high they are and, and which order they go and you just tell them those facts, and then you try to ask them to reproduce those facts like three minutes later, they will probably get like three or four of those right out of 10. On the other hand, if you give somebody those 10 facts, but you support it with a story, uh, with some charts and graphs, with some uh, visual representations, some uh, like make them imagine something happening, something going on, um, and then you ask them to reproduce those same facts in three minutes, they're going to get much more right. They might not get 10 out of 10, but they might get like 7 or 8 right because all of a sudden they had a story behind why this building is taller than that building or, um, you know, who constructed them. Or it could even be an imaginary story of somebody running across these buildings and jumping from one to the other and in which order they go and so on. So in that sense, all of a sudden, a story helps people remember things, helps people comprehend things better. And that's exactly how memory masters are able to remember lots and lots of facts. Uh, for instance, a couple of episodes ago on the show, we had Anthony Medivier, who actually tra- trains people how to use their memory better. And, and he shares some tips on the podcast. And that's what exactly he does. He goes through stories. And so now we're bringing all of that uh, back to data science. How is that related? Well, in data science, all of the time, we don't just search for facts and give insights, right? We don't just create insights, we have to convey those insights. We have to explain them to people who are less technical than us or business decision makers or our managers or our colleagues. We have to explain those insights. And the first impulse that we always have or usually people have is to just present the facts, just supply the facts. But what if you take those facts and you put them into a story, not an imaginary story, but a story of what, what the facts mean for the company, how, what the facts mean for the customers, what journey you personally went through when you were discovering, uncovering those facts, and you help people um, comprehend those facts through all those different areas of the brain. So not just the Wernicke's area that is responsible for language comprehension just because you're supplying facts, but you get them to feel, to see, to 
taste, to smell, all these different things. You know, you don't have to engage all of the parts of the brain with your story, but the more you engage, the more easy, the easier it's going to be for people to comprehend what you're conveying and understand it and retain that information. So that's the power of storytelling in data science and from an uh, from a scientific point of view. And I challenge you to try it out sometime this weekend. It doesn't have to be in data science, it can be in anything. Whenever you're trying to convey some fact to somebody, stop yourself and try it through a story. And even if you don't have that situation where you need to convey facts, try it out. Just, you know, for, for practice, get your friend or relative uh, and sit them down and like play this game where you can you know, just come up with some random facts, look up the top 10 uh, top uh, 10 tallest buildings in the world or something like that and explain it to them but not just through facts through a story and practice that and then next week see how you can do that at work so that was um, storytelling in data science very powerful one of the core components of storytelling in data science is visualization is creating images and on that note what I wanted to say is next week look out for something special we are relaunching right now we're in the process of reworking remastering all of our Tableau courses, Tableau is a visualization tool. So next week you will hear from us about the relaunch of these courses. And if you're interested in upgrading your visualization skills with the latest Tableau software, then look out for that. There'll be emails flying out and around next week all about Tableau 10 and that can help you in visualization, which is a component of Storytelling. On that note, I hope you enjoyed today's podcast and I look forward to seeing you back here next time. Until then, happy analyzing.